Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you another analysis cast. I've not done an analysis stream in actually some time. I think the last one looks like it was about a month ago. I got caught up in tournaments recently, but now we are gonna have another analysis cast. And this is gonna be a game between Google Frog and Aquanim on Kaleo. And if those names are not familiar, they should be if you've been watching the tournaments at all, because Google Frog and Aquanim have been teaming up every tournament. Pretty much for every 2v2 tournament that's come up, and they recently placed third in the most recent one. They placed first in the one two months ago. Yeah, the one from two weeks ago, they went third. Really surprising, that whole tournament was full of ups. Actually, they might have been fourth, come to think of it. Anyway. At this point, though, they are fighting against each other. And Aquanim has actually been getting better progressively as they've been playing more and more. I mean, they're playing against Google Frog. If Google Frog is your sparring partner, you're going to get good really fast. So let's go over how this match goes. So first off, starting out, Kaleo being Kaleo, should point out, like, two metal across the map. It's basically, it's moderate amount of metal, moderate amount of metal spots. You can easily get three, and the corners are fairly easy to get to as well, but not the most defensible, and definitely in the center, it's hard to hold. And there's only one metal spot along each side, as well as a couple of random ones in the middle. Yeah, you basically don't have a huge amount of metal that's easy to take outside of the corners. So I'll probably see the players go for the corners fairly quickly. Players typically will expand and crawl. They'll typically either crawl south and north or east and west. But I don't know if we're gonna see which one we're going to see here. Well, actually, I do know because I've watched it several times, but I'm not going to give it away. And with that, it'll also be a question of whether or not the players end up hitting each other right at the start. Or if they pass each other, like they each go in the same cardinal direction, or same or opposite cardinal directions, rather than going towards the same corner. That depends entirely on how it goes. So this map, however, is not the most hilly, but typically favors Cloakie to an extent. We do see Aquanim is actually planning on going for Hovercraft, which is a little bit unusual. But yeah, not terribly unusual. Anyway, Google Frog, not sure what they're going to go for. Probably Cloakie. Well, it's not clear what they're going to go for, but it's probably Cloakie. I shouldn't say I'm not sure because I know exactly what happens. I, like I said, I do check analysis casts. It's the exhibition matches I don't check beforehand, but the analysis casts I do. Anyway, so Google Frog's not making it clear right now, but yes, it'll probably be Cloakie. Cloakie is a common one on this map. It's extremely common. Rarely do you see anything else, but we do see Hovercraft for Aquinum, so Google Frog, we'll see what they go for. Let us begin. Google Frog actually going for Shield, which is... Not terribly unusual. On a map this size, it can work. This is an 8x8 map, so shields... The thing with shields is they're bandits. They're fairly quick raiders, but outside of the bandits, they tend to rely on balls a lot. Whereas a hovercraft are much quicker. They can go around the map more easily, though this is a bit of a hilly map, but it's not that hilly. It's fairly flat overall. The actual map itself, as you can see, there's hardly any terrain change to it. It's, it's pretty flat. So anyway, Google Frog getting their shields up, getting a couple bandits up. No dirtbag scout. This is a little bit unusual. Most players will go for a dirtbag starting scout. Google Frog's not going for that. They're going purely bandit as their starting scout. And a couple of them as well. Aquanum, on the other hand, going for many daggers. Now, Hovercraft, the thing with Hovercraft is you want to get a lot of daggers. Now, Aquanum decided to go very quickly for maces, which actually makes a fair amount of sense. The map this size, I mean, there's not much reason to go necessarily that heavy on vehicle raiders. Vehicle riots move around a lot, but yeah, it's... Oh, Ophelia's pointing out, yeah, hovers can go over this lake, presumably without getting damaged. Because this lake does damage units that actually get submerged in it. But hovers never get submerged in water. Or in this case, lava. It actually is water, but it's damaging water. Hovers can't get submerged in it, so that does make some sense. However, maces as well, because of the fact that this map is fairly small, maces don't have that long to move. So they can get into combat fairly quickly, Despite the fact that this is corner to corner, maces don't have a hard time getting into combat. Daggers, on the other hand, you have to ball them up. It takes a little while to build up to. And I think Aquinum may just not be super confident in their ability to out-micro Google Frog. And as I've mentioned before, when it comes to the raider phase, if you aren't confident in your micromanagement, then it's usually a good idea to try to get some riots up and basically make up for, microman make up for in map awareness and map control what you lack in micromanagement skill relative to your opponent. That being said, Aquinum did manage to get off one of the bandits already, and it looks like a second bandit could easily go down. Though it's a little bit risky. In fact, one of the yeah, one of the daggers does go down. 
Still, two bandits for one dagger, fairly even trade. Though Akinem is going to want to get more daggers. I mean, the thing is, daggers work best when balled up. If they can one-shot, they're good. If not, they tend to fall pretty quickly. So at this point, Aquanim is actually expanding considerably slower. Google Frog is already taking the south side as well as the eastern side, going north of their commander along the east wall. And in the south side, they're going up with some convicts, or going west with some convicts, while Aquanim sending their commander rather symmetric to Google Frog, but were a bit later with their quill, considerably less focused on their economy. However, they're also considerably more focused on harassing and raiding, and like I said, maces don't take that long to get around because the map is quite small. So Akronim able to pull that mace in within a minute. Now we're at the 3 minute mark, we're getting a mace attack very quickly, and Google Frog switching directly into Felon. But Akronim already predicting this, getting a halberd after the dagger. This is a huge thing, like, this halberd here is going to stop the Felon. That's not even much of a spoiler, you want to use heavy units or units with shielding like halberds, well, I shouldn't say shielding because shields are actually a mechanic, but units that have some sort of armor state or generally heavy units because the felon ends up burning all of its shield energy on those units, loses all of its ammunition, and because its shields are drained, the shields of the entire ball are drained, other units can just clean up no problem. Now at the same time, Google Frog should point out has already pretty much taken the northeast side or northeast corner while Aquanim expanding considerably slower and Aquanim has to be careful here. They don't want to lose too much to this felon. I mean, Aquanim is... Pro I'm sure they're aware of this. Okay, if they're not aware of this, they're definitely guessing correctly. But I'm pretty sure they are quite aware of this felon. They've seen it with the daggers. Trying to avoid it. And that halberd is... Halberd's right here. You need to pull that into position. Get it under that felon. And then get the mace behind it. Possibly the daggers as well. Now, there aren't really any support forces. The convict... The convict ball is coming in here. And a felon convict ball... That's something we see fairly frequently. I should also point out over to the north side, daggers are moving to try to get rid of Google Frog's commander. But yeah, Felon Convict is fairly common. What you can do with Felon Convict is build a bunch of defenses while the Felon pushes forward for actual support. So let's just, I guess, now analyze this. Sorry, okay, okay, I can't replay part of the replays. But yeah, this, this is what I mean. The Halberd draining all that energy. There's a bandit for support, but that's about it. And the mace. The Mace and Albert able to get rid of this felon, no problem, while the Daggers, on the other hand, over to the northeast, not able to do much. Which is quite a blow there. Aquanim losing all those Daggers, especially right next to Google Frog's commander, that's going to give Google Frog a lot of reclaim income. While Aquanim, on the other hand, does get rid of the felon, but another felon will soon be in production, very, pretty sure. While at the same time, the Bandit is managing to get in here. Should be intercepted by the Scalpel, and yes it is. But Aquanim, Aquanim actually getting not that far ahead. I mean, getting rid of the Felon was good. They were slightly ahead militarily, but they haven't moved to reclaim it yet. They haven't really built a lot of works. In fact, how many works does Aquanim have? Let's see. Aquanim has one. Has a single quill compared to Google Frogs two, no, five. Three of which are on the front lines. Two of which are inside the base, one of them helping out build a felon, Keep seeing that both players have about 17 metal, but Aquanim is not spending it. In fact, they are getting excess on metal. While on the other hand, Google Frog is using all their metal. So Aquanim, despite the fact that they are dealing quite a bit of damage and harassing fairly well, they aren't actually doing all that much. Google Frog is still fairly ahead, it's just that Google Frog doesn't have much military to project that with yet. But that second felon coming up, however, the halberd's still in existence. Google Frog, getting racketeers, not a bad idea, but really a better idea would probably... Let's just think about this for a second. So Google Frog... Google Frog probably would want to go for rogues or thugs. Actually, maybe not rogues. Rogues take a while to fire. Thugs are a bit better, deal a decent amount of damage, but even then, it's a bit tricky. Bandits have the rate of fire. It really kind of comes down to what you can hit with. The nice thing about Rate of Fire is that it means that if the Halberd ever attacks, which I should point out, the Halberd is on Hold Fire. This is very important. I've mentioned this many, many, many times. Hold Fire your Halberds. In fact, there is there is a setting in Game Unit States. Game New Unit States, Hovercraft Platform. Where's the Halberd? The Halberd Fire State should be on Hold Fire. The second one, well, this is the first one. This is the second one. 
It should be right here. That's where it should be. If it isn't, set it to that in your game. It'll make halberd play so much easier. Anyway. So, Aquidem has either done that or set it manually. Either way, that is the right thing to do. Well done. And is also moving forward here. So, Aquidem is going to be... Like I said, this is where... I wouldn't necessarily use bandits. The daggers are a bit of a pain. Outlaws would make a bit of sense. Thugs as support to Felon Ball would probably be the best option. I mean, yes, the Halberd would be able to fire in between and the Felon would probably hit it. But the thing is, if the Felon targets everything but the Halberd, that's the thing, is that the Felon just needs to be microed away from that Halberd. The Thugs can deal with the Halberd if they want to, but the, as long as the Felon deals with the Daggers and the Scalpel and everything but the Halberd, then it's fine. Now, at the same time, Aquinum is now getting a few more Quills up. Has about two. Still not great. Google Frog, on the other hand, like I said, just has a lot more convicts. They have their, and their commander is building up quite a bit more. I mean, in both cases, the amount of map control is about even. And in fact, Aquinum has a bit more thanks to this one expansion here. But overall, it's fairly, it's dead even. And Aquinum has not yet been spending their metal on any additional units. Google Frog has been doing so, and that is getting them a slight advantage by metal. Especially with the Racketeers here, that's going to be a bit of a pain. That's going to be more annoying than anything, especially with the Halberd. If the Halberd tanks those shots, no big deal. If other units tank those shots, that's a problem. Especially since the Dagger is now running into a Defender and can get rid of it. Will get rid of this expansion here. But still, Aquinum not actually getting a whole lot of firepower. Just spending a lot... Wow, spending into a Penetrator? I do not agree with this. This is... Quite a lot of cash here. That's a thousand metal. That's going to take over a minute. Like a minute and a half. And I generally say if it takes more than a minute, rethink it. But now it's taking less than a minute, so that's kind of on the edge. Still, Aquinum does a 20 metal. They could be pushing more metal into this. It's just... Aquinum has not been building a lot of quills. And that will come up later, actually. The fact that Aquinum hasn't been building a lot of quills will be coming up later. But it's coming up now as well. And Aquinum has found the Northeast. I mean, they already kind of knew about it, but they are harassing it. They're doing a very good job harassing. They're keeping Google Frog's economy down. They're doing an okay job expanding their own economy, though they're not defending this southwest side here, which looks pretty much doomed because of this. Northeast has been taken down. Northeast here would also be problematic, but yeah, it's just... And yeah, Orphelia's pointing out Thug Law Bandits would be a good idea. And like I said, Thug's are a good idea. Outlaw kind of makes sense because the daggers... Bandits, I don't know, with the, with the mace, it's a bit risky. If they're under the shields, there's no problem. If they are not under the shields, the mace will eat them up. I don't know if I totally agree with that part. But yeah, the halberd definitely does counter the felon. We saw before, it counters the felon. And this entire northeast side taking a lot of damage. <sighs> really bad timing. Okay, sorry about that. Phone going off. Anyway. So Google Frog is, well, they're setting up northeast pretty strongly. They're trying to take the southwest as well. So let's think about this. What Aquinum has right now is a penetrator. That's what Aquinum has. They're going to be able to do a fair amount of damage with that, but the northeast they don't have much, and that's the problem. They are they have a very 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 heavyweight unit. Nine minutes into the game, in this situation, I mean yes, the Felon is a heavyweight unit, but this is really risky. If they take care of Google Frog's commander, it should work out okay. But they have to do this. And between the Stinger and the Faraday coming in here, that's going to be a problem. The Southeast has been taken... Southwest, I should say, has been taken out. Southeast has not been taken out. That belongs to Google Frog pretty strongly. But yeah, the Northeast is not being taken. Aquinum is letting that go. Letting Google Frog take that. That's giving Google Frog a lot of territory to work from. And Google Frog right now is about the same... Well, about the same metal as Aquinum. And yeah, especially with the Southwest going out... Aquinum lost quite a lot of their economic advantage. However, this attack here, they are retreating from the northeast, but they're attacking the southeast, and the southeast has defender, two defenders, a Faraday, and not much else. A bandit under production, but that's actually... That's not even getting under production. What the heck? That's actually a little bit weird. But yeah, either this is on weight, or there's a strange economy change, but yes. Even the Lotus is coming in here, that's not going to help too much. With that Lotus down, there is nothing really to defend against this, and that mace gets free reign. At the same time, to the west side, we do have an attack from Google Frog, just, just with the Racketeers, but really, this mace, that is going to take out this factory here. However, at the same time, Google Frog is building up strongly in the northeast. They have a caretaker. They can make a factory if they like. 
They don't really need to worry about the Southeast too much. I mean, they should worry about it, but honestly, they can't do much to deal with that. But they are building a Klokuba factory. The Caretaker is surprisingly not contributing. That, that's really odd. But yeah, that's... That's... Okay, there it goes. I wonder, wonder why it wasn't doing that. Possibly because of lack of resources. Anyway, now that, that this factory is gone, the Caretaker is going to help out. And Aquanim now has a Caretaker at their main base. I should kind of slow this down. So Aquanim is now spending all 15 of their metal. Google Frog is kind of accessing, but that makes sense. They just lost their main production facility. They're trying to replace that. Aquanim spending 15 metal into Halberds and Maces. That kind of makes sense. Halberds and Maces aren't a bad idea against Felons, but more Daggers might not be a bad idea, especially when you consider the sheer number of Convicts. And Racketeers as well. The Daggers just tank the Racketeer shots. I mean, the Halberds can do so as well. The problem would be the Penetrator. The Penetrator gets hit. That is going to be a big deal. Now, at the same time, Akron's commander out in the open. Google Frog is well aware of everything, actually. Google Frog has total radar coverage of the whole map. And Aquanim... Oops. Aquanim as well. Actually, no. Aquanim has half radar coverage. In fact, doesn't know what's going on in the south side at all. Kind of knows what's going on to the northeast, but not got a whole lot to deal with that. Like, despite this supposed advantage in military. Most of that's the penetrator. The rest of that is the fact that maces cost 400 metal each. It is all concentrated to the southwest, fighting Google Frog's army directly, rather than taking out the northeast and taking out the cloaky butt factory right here. That is... That's a big deal. That is going to be a huge deal. This factory here is going to give Google Frog a lot of potential. And Aquanim... I don't know if Aquanim realizes that Google Frog has built a factory there. Because like I said, Aquanim does see some blips over in the northeast corner. Oftentimes, if you see blips like that, it's just a bunch, a crowd of blips, especially around metal spots, and especially in a defensible region. It's a good idea to check, because it's probably a factory. Aquanim doesn't actually know yet whether or not it's a factory, but it probably is a factory. It usually is a factory. Now the Penetrator... Yeah, see, the Penetrator has been hit with the Disarm, and that is causing problems. However, with the Stinger gone, this is now open. But even then, everything is for Aquanim over in the southwest side of the map. Nothing to the northeast. A lot of glaives being built up for some harassment. And right now, Aquanim's base has a few lotuses. It can get a mace up pretty quickly. Poorly timed, and Google Frog will lose these glaives if they attack with them right away. And this is kind of what I meant earlier. Aquanim doesn't have that many quills. They have this. This is it. This is their one quill. Their commander's over to the north. They're really not... They're not expanding very much. They are taking out the Southwest expansion, but they don't have quills that are coming in right afterwards to retake it for themselves. This is going to be empty for some time, actually. At the same time, Google Frog coming through here, taking on a metal extractor as they go, and Aquanim ready to defend this. So these these glaives won't last too long. But at the same time, like I said, the Southwest not really being taken out. And I kind of like Google Frog setting up some terraform walls, just stopping Aquanim from doing much here. But even with that, it's... Yeah, okay, these guys live not too much. Like, those convicts, they live, but anything comes in there afterwards and it's kind of done. There's not much they can do about that. But yeah, that's the one thing, is no quills here. Like, two or three quills down in the southwest just to counter the convicts, take care of the terraform wall. That would get rid of that, and then quickly be able to build up all of these metal extractors. Because at this point, Aquanim has half the economy of Google Frog, a lot of that being reclaim, actually. But not even all that much. If you look at the amount of mechs Google Frog has, I mean, Google Frog has... Oops. Come on. Okay, whatever. Anyway, Google Frog has... One, two, three, five, seven mechs. That's 14 off the mechs, and... A fair amount of overdrive, too. It looks like it's bumping up quite a bit from overdrive, but even then... And then on top of that, plus four from the commander. While Aquanum, on the other hand, has, like... Three. Three metal extractors plus commander. Plus whatever little overdrive they're getting. That's the thing. Aquanim is not expanding a lot. And this is... I mean, Aquanim's ahead militarily, but still, they're going to fall behind. Especially with sides coming in. There are no daggers to screen for the sides. And that's one thing that Aquanim could really use right now. And Aquanim is getting a few more quills. But that was really risky. Now Aquanim's commander out in the open. The sides are taking it out. And this is going to be a problem. Aquanim's about to lose their commander and... Yeah, down it goes. 
So Aquinas Commander gets taken out. And Google Frog still has theirs. Now Aquinum at half the metal of Google, but Aquinum has all the map. Like Aquinum has total control of the entire map, pretty much. Google Frog has some size here and there, but Aquinum can take out everything here. But isn't building enough quills to expand. I mean, even that quill they had built. I mean, yeah, it's over here. Building LLT is not a bad idea, but that's only one quill. As well as the scythe is going around back, which is going to be a problem. The LLT should be able to take care of it without too much issue. And this mace looks like it's catching wise. Aquinum seems to have the uh, the right idea. Kind of knows that there's something going on. Yeah, overall, Aquinum has the military advantage. Google Frog has the economic advantage. And that just means that with time, Google Frog will take the lead. Economic advantage is just deferred military advantage by time. Like, it just means your military advantage a few minutes from now. And that is going to be an issue. Goofrog switching over to getting some maces. Actually, getting some... Oh, this is a good idea. Getting sharpshooters. Because, remember, this entire game, Aquinas has been building halberds and building maces. Building heavy units the entire game. Good riot units. And like I said, a map this... This is a small map. They can pretty easily get around and do stuff. But that's about it, and this is really well. This is where quills would have been very handy. Google Frog, they've allowed this to live. The go convicts were able to live because there was nothing to destroy this. Okay, thank you, Orphelius. Good to know the halberds do in fact tank snipers. I suspected they did. I mean, it's twelve fifty. Snipers deal fifteen hundred damage a shot. Halberds have twelve fifty, and their armor, I believe, is a three times bonus, or I believe it thirds the damage. It might quarter the damage, in fact. Regardless, that's going to get them well over 1,500. So yes, they will tank a single pen they will tank a single sharpshooter shot. They would also tank, tank a single penetrator shot, regardless of whether or not they're shooting, actually, I think. No, penetrators are 2,000. No, sorry, 3,000. However, halberds on armor will still tank a penetrator shot. That's relevant, though, because the penetrator here is not doing anything, and it's also on Aquinum's side. What is relevant, however, is the fact that Aquinum's army is primarily the southwest, trying to get rid of these builders, but without builders of their own to deal with this, finally a quill coming down to the southwest. But this is like five minutes too late. And also dead. That doesn't help. Dead quills are not particularly useful. But yeah, that's the thing. There's how many quills are there? There's four quills now, so Aquinum finally getting workers up. But that has been a weakness of Aquinum this entire game is in insufficient workers. Ghoul Frog, on the other hand, had convicts the entire game. Has been balling at the convicts. They actually, this is the fewest convicts they've ever had. It's just these two in the hole here, and they're gonna probably build up some wreckers. Actually, I shouldn't say that because that's convicts. That's not builders in general. They have conjurers as well. Admittedly, only one of them right now, but they've had more conjurers before, I think, and they will have more conjurers in the future. Getting more right now. Actually, building five right now, right off the bat, just to take all of this. Re There's a massive field of reclaim here. It's hard to see because of the fact that this is a dark map. But yeah, if we have. This conjurer here is going to take a thousand metal with reclaim, and a good thought. I should point that actually. Let's pause the game. Let's let's go over the situation right now. Aquinum has gone for an air switch for a single thunderbird. Good plan. Blocks this out. Make sure to stun this out. Actually got a sharpshooter as well. Unfortunately, nothing to really follow up. There aren't many daggers in play. There's two daggers, one halberd, which would also be a good follow up, but not too close. Some maces coming in here, but really the halberds and maces could have dealt with this without the disarm. The disarm kind of helps. But the problem, of course, is the other sharpshooter. The daggers will be able to just distract those shots no problem or tear it apart regardless. Or just screen for cloaked units. That's a really nice use of light units. Screen for cloaked units. And yeah, like I said, and Orphelius is pointing out, the quills are too late. That's the thing. The quills are too late. They aren't... They aren't really there. And the problem was that they needed to be there like 5-10 minutes earlier. Just follow up. As a general rule, when you harass an area, especially when you know that you, when you can tell you have map control over the area, and it's a good idea to check for that too, pull in some workers. Like, have like 2 or 3 workers in tow behind your army, just to retake it afterwards, and to reclaim everything too. That makes it a lot more efficient. And we actually see this with Google Frog right now. Google Frog is doing exactly this. They have a conjurer right behind their lines, reclaiming what they can, and then even if that Conjurer dies, even if Aquinum, I mean, if Aquinum takes this out, well, that Conjurer will die. Oh well. I mean, it's 100, it's 140 metal, but it's already reclaimed. Like, almost half, it's reclaimed at least 200 metal just off this Commander alone. Let alone anything else it might have reclaimed. 
So this conjurer has more than paid for itself. And it's pretty much pushing Google Fox economy. While Aquanim, on the other hand, just now getting a quill down here, just now with nothing else, it could pull this penetrator out and actually looks like it's doing exactly that. Yeah, it's leveling the ground under the penetrator, getting it out of that hole, finally, 10 minutes later. And then probably going to go for the metal extractors, is it? Nothing showing yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't. And now daggers finally come in. So daggers are in here. They are being used for screening, but without the halberds and may supports, they're a little bit hard to make use of effectively. Getting rid of a few metal extractors here and there, not a bad idea, but still not great. And the fact that Aquanim's economy is fairly weak does mean they can't do much with this. Like, they can't push it. The caretaker's not doing much. They can't build air units as well for additional support. They can't bomb out this caretaker, for example, with the ravens, which would be very handy. Bombing out these caretakers, that would probably give... Or bombing out the Stardust, like, two bombs on the Stardust would take it out. And that would allow their ground forces to get in, but no. And now Google Frog, Google Frog, there we go. This is what I meant by deferred military advantage. This is the, a few minutes later, Google Frog has a military advantage. Because of the economic advantage that has been pretty solid, despite being heavily raided either because of Reclaim or because Aquanim did not come in and build up metal extractors on top of Google Frog's corpses. So, I mean, these are these are mistakes that just come out as a result of being kind of overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff going on. There are a lot of things Aquanim has to pay attention to, and the army is the easiest thing to pay attention to. Go into the army, destroy the stuff, just go and destroy things. Coming in with a lot of workers later on, that's something that is tricky to remember to do, because it isn't the most direct path to victory. And it's often easy to forget everything but the most direct path to victory. I find this all the time, especially when I'm tired. It's really hard for me in any game. Not just not just 0K, not just RTS games. Any game. When I'm tired, I have a hard time imagining any path to victory other than just attack, attack, attack. Like just stepping back, thinking, okay, no, if I build up... If I get myself into a better position and then attack from that position, I'm going to have an easier time winning than just attacking directly from wherever I am now. Not sure if Aquanim is feeling that stress. They probably are. I mean, this is Google Frog they're fighting against. Just the fact that they're fighting against Google Frog alone. Although, to be fair, they have done a very good job up to this point. The fact that their quills were not built in time is about the only mistake I can really point out that they made. And that's kind of a common mistake. It's something that I should point out. And actually, something that I've been told, really good thing to do. Try to make a quarter of your army metal value. Not a quarter of your army in terms of numbers, but metal value be workers. So if you're getting several heavy units, build a lot of workers. And actually, in that case, tag them along the heavy unit to repair it. It's actually one of the things I was pointing out, I meant to point out before with the convicts on the felon. The thing about felon convict, they do two things. So felon plus convict, you have the shields, actually three things. Convicts recharge the felon shields. They repair the felon health should the felon get damaged which probably only happened if the felon's about to die, but hey, it could kill, it could save the felon's life, so you never know. Good to have. And they can also creep over defenses. We don't see it in this game. When Cubay was playing more frequently, it was a few months ago, there were some games that I showed off on, there was one on Vitra, where Cubay actually did that a lot, with a bunch of convicts just building defenses as they went, just leapfrogging defenses with the felon as additional support. That worked very strongly. The weakness, of course, is that you're relying entirely on the Felon for damage dealing. The defenses help a bit, but the Felon is the primary damage dealer, and if they throw out Halberds or Crabs or other heavy units that just take a lot of punishment, that Felon is going to drain all the shields, and it's going to have nothing left. And then follow-up units can come in and tear everything apart. If they kill the Felon, those convicts are going to have only as easy of a time as as many defenses that they, as they've built so far. If they haven't built a lot of defenses, they're hooped. And so curiously, Akronim going for an Athena. I have no idea what Akronim is planning on doing with this. There's nothing on here for construction. I really don't know. Athena is... Athena is basically another factory in terms of cost. And it's nice that it's mobile, but this isn't the map where you can really stick stuff. You can't drop the Athena behind this base. This area here doesn't actually exist. It's, it's a graphical art. It's, it's a little bit of graphical prettiness to make it less, make it, well, not less clear that it doesn't exist. Yeah, it makes it less clear that this is the edge of the map, but it's more importantly that it makes it so that it's not just a big block in space or a big mesh in space. It looks a bit more complete, but that's all it is. And I don't even think Aquanima's map extension on. But yeah, there's nothing to drop behind. 
The only place the Athena could go to build units is right in the heart of Google Frog's base. I suppose the Athena could build units over to the southeast, but there's already a caretaker there. I could already get some stuff. And now Aquanim starting to build up, but remember what I said before. Economic advantage is deferred military advantage. And right now, Google Frog is an overwhelming current military advantage. So despite Aquanim's economic advantage, they have to defend this, and they're going to have a very hard time doing so. The Penetrator is the only thing they've got. And with all the Glaives coming here, that is the hard counter, and I think this is going to be game. The Athena just about getting built up, and it looks like Aquanim is probably not going to... Yeah, Aquanim has nothing to work from here. So unfortunately, Aquanim did not get the, the economic advantage when they had the military advantage in order to completely reinforce it. Google Frog able to pull military advantage out of the economic advantage. And that is the game. So important takeaways for this game. Felons get countered by heavy units. Well, okay, felons get countered by heavy units is a pretty standard thing. Build workers and tag your workers behind your army. When you're going through to try to sweep, not just harass to take out metal extractors, but when you're actually sweeping, when you're doing a full-on assault, bring your workers with you so that you can assault and immediately take control of the area. You immediately claim that territory. And okay, you know what? If it dies... No problem. If it's been more than a minute or so, you've gotten your money back. Especially if there's reclaim in the area, you've definitely gotten your money back. While with Google Frog, and I mean like a minute, because actually half a minute, because metal extractors cost 75 each. Yeah, 75 metal each, and they typically bring back two per second. Which means that it would take 37 and a half seconds in order to get back the 75 metal. Actually, it's not two per second, it's slightly more than that. Or slightly less, sorry, but it's about 2 per second, so basically 38 seconds, it's paid for itself. If it lasts that long, it's worth it. If it lasts longer, you're actually making profit. If it lasts shorter, well, that's unfortunate, but that's the, one of the things you want to scout out for. Make sure that you're not going to get assaulted back qu too quickly to be able to pay those metal extractors off. Usually, though, I see when I see games, it's typically something you can get away with, especially Reclaim. Reclaim you can totally get away with. Reclaim, as long as your worker reclaims at least their cost, it's worth it. And that's usually fairly easy, especially when there's been a large battle. Your opponent's probably going to leave that no man's land for a while, and that gives you a lot of time to bring your constructors in. As long as you have a few units in there so that their constructors can't do much, yeah, that's, that is a big deal. And the other thing is, when you see a bunch of radar blips, just a big cluster of radar blips, assume there's a factory and scout it out. Make sure you know if there's a factory or not. If there is a factory, treat it as if your opponent has not lost anything. In fact, well, treat it as you would a factory. It's a factory. It's huge. It's a huge deal. Your opponent has another base or, well, a base in this case, but another base usually. A very big deal. Important to deal with that. Overall, though, the biggest thing I'd say is the lack of builders. Make sure you have enough builders. A typical thing I've heard is a quarter of your army metal value, not a quarter of your army size, but metal value should be workers. Not sure if that's necessarily the best thing to do, but having a lot of workers is good. Having a lot of workers gets you expansion, gets you repair, gets you reclaim, which in the mid-game is huge, and the late game is everything. Like, once you get to the point where the metal extractors are fairly evenly divided, you want reclaim. That's all you have to work with. It's everything. Okay, Orphelia's pointing out every five raiders make a constructor. So that's a little bit of a smaller ratio. That's probably more like one-seventh one of your metal value. No. Raiders use about half the cost of constructors, so that would work out to about... Actually, it's still about one quarter. Yeah. Yeah, so one quarter of your metal value. That's That would be the biggest takeaway, I'd say, from this. Because Aquinum had Google Frog on the ropes. But because Aquinum did not retake this southwest side of the map and also didn't destroy these convicts when they had the chance, which a constructor would have helped with too. It would have gotten rid of the terraform, and that would have allowed the penetrator to destroy them. Also would have gotten the penetrator out of the ground, allowing it to come forward here and assist with destroying everything in the northeast. Having not been able to do that, that was a big problem. The other problem was in the main base, there weren't any constructors to build caretakers or just to assist the factory directly, meaning that the hovercraft factory could not use a lot of the metal that Aquinum had. As we can see, even at the end, Aquinum was excessing. Most of the game, Aquinum was excessing metal. Google Frog only excessed metal around the time that they lost their factory, as far as I could tell. I wasn't paying close attention, so I'm probably wrong, but Aquinum was excessing metal quite a lot. So yeah, that would be the biggest thing, biggest tip. Build more workers. Building workers is very important. So yeah, that about wraps it up, I think. 
So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something. And that will be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody. Oh, actually, before I go, although I realize this is not probably the best video to put on because it's not going to be particularly well watched. Well, it might be because it's an analysis video. I'm planning to change my streaming schedule, at least temporarily. Like, I'll probably do a stream next Tuesday on Remembrance Day, although I'm not sure what game to do. Maybe I'll do Red Baron again. Did that last year. Worked okay. The tactical... It was no tactical problem. It was just... As far as it worked as a game for World War One, it seemed to work pretty fine. I would kind of wish that the new Red Baron was even close to Alpha, so I could play it and show that instead. Rise of Flight is another game I have that could work, but the thing with Rise of Flight is it doesn't quite do the same campaign setup that Red Baron does, and I really like the way the Red Baron campaign works to show off World War One historically. Anyway, the point is, after that, I'm going to be doing Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays. I don't know if I'm going to do Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday, but I am going to do Wednesday instead of Tuesday. So for the very least, from November 18th to December 9th, I'm going to be doing Wednesday. I might just do Wednesday instead. might do Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I'm not totally sure. But that's that's my plan. So just letting you know, I'm at least temporarily going to be switching to Wednesdays from Tuesdays. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. So once again, thank you for watching and have a good night, everyone.